Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit more. How about a whole lot more? Do you mind if I over deliver by giving you the personal initiative? This is the go-getter energy. That moves you to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together in one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one show. One book and one show. And what you get is work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is how to have something to say. This is for all the creators out there, all the presenters, all the, the speakers, the bloggers, the, the podcasters, the coaches, the consultants, anyone who wants to draw an audience via your whatever you have in your head, whatever it is out there that you want to share. The topic here today is how to have something to say, aka how not to be garbage. Now, you don't want to be garbage out here. You don't want to have a garbage blog or a garbage YouTube channel or a garbage Facebook page or a garbage Instagram account or a garbage podcast or a garbage uh, TED talk. You don't want to be garbage out here. So today's topic is how not to be garbage. Okay, the PC version of it is how to have something to say, but it's both. Okay, you don't want to be garbage and you want to have something to say. If you got something to say, you won't be garbage. And if you are garbage, it's probably because you have nothing to say. So these work hand in hand, you understand. First of all, at the beginning of the the internet being what it is, internet web 2.0, as they called it. I don't know if they still call it that. And we might be on to a different version. But back at web 2.0, this is around the time where I really started getting uh, invested in the internet. This is around the mid 2000s. Let's say from 2005 to about 2010. Blogging was the thing. This is when people were starting up blogs. You could start a blog for free. You could publish as often as you want. It was digital, so it didn't cost you any ink, didn't cost you any paper. There were no physical goods. A lot of people were blogging. And then from about 2010 to around 2015, that's when everybody started doing YouTube channels and everybody's putting up videos. That's still going. Lately, the thing now in 2020, now we got a lot of people popping up with podcasts. And there are people who still blog, there are people who still do YouTube. Now the podcast is the thing. And the podcast is basically any type of any type of audio that people put out. Some people are podcasting, but they're not even in the podcast app. They're putting everything on YouTube and still calling it a podcast. Because why? Because podcasting is the hot thing. So saying that you have a podcast keeps you, I guess people feel like that keeps them current and keeps them relevant. I don't know exactly what people are thinking. I can't read minds, but this is what's, this is the cycle of how things have been going. And all this is cool. Okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this because when I saw that blogging was an opportunity, I started blogging. I just happened to do it before a whole lot of people. YouTube, the exact same thing. Podcasting, the exact same thing. But I wasn't the very first to do any of these. So there are people out there who might look at me and say, well, Dre just started doing it after I was already doing it. So the same way I could be saying it about person X, somebody could be saying it about me. So it's all good. It's free to have a blog, YouTube or a podcast. And I mean, who doesn't want to put the who doesn't want to put it in their bio that they have a blog or that they wrote a book or they have a YouTube channel or that they have a podcast? I mean, it's, a, it's almost like a feather in your cap just to be able to say, hey, I have this thing I'm creating. I get it. Okay. I completely understand it. I get it. I even support it. The thing is, here's the thing that's led to this topic. A lot of these motherfuckers who are putting this stuff out are just garbage. And because you're garbage, you are muddying up the game with your trash. Any of you who lives near water or you've been near any water lately, if you go near some water where people don't really respect the environment and there's a lot of trash that is washed up on the shoreline, in Miami where I live, there are some places that I know that when I go there, I'm going to see all the trash that gets washed up on the shoreline simply because people don't respect people don't respect the environment that they're in. So they drop trash. Actually, today I was walking. I was walking to pick up a pizza, as a matter of fact. And I saw this woman, she was walking in my direction and she had like a little, one of those little ketchup packs or maybe it was mustard and she squeezed it out on some food that she was eating and then she just dropped the pack right on the ground and just kept right on walking. I hadn't seen anybody do that in a long time. I, when I was growing up, people used to do that all the time, but these days I don't really see people do it that often, but I saw this woman do it. She did it right in front of me and she just kept walking like it was nothing, like this was a normal thing for her to do. And I walked past where she was walking and I saw the thing on the ground and I said, I just took note of it. I didn't pick it up myself, all right? So I'm not, I guess I, I don't have any, uh, I'm not on a, a moral high ground with her because I didn't pick up her trash. I didn't say nothing to her. I just noted that she did it. But I'm telling you that to help explain, give you a visual as to how 
people, when they don't respect the environment that they're in, they just take their garbage and just dump it on the platform and they're making it worse for everybody else. Now it's harder for the fish, it's harder for the swimmers, it's harder for everybody, and somebody's gonna eventually have to clean up that garbage or we're just gonna have a whole pile of garbage that we gotta walk through every single day to do what we do. So today, I'm gonna start cleaning up the garbage. Today I'm taking it on myself to help clean up the garbage and I'm gonna give you, you and you, a primer that you can use to check yourself and make sure that you are not throwing garbage in the ocean of podcasting, YouTubing, blogging, coaching, consulting, speaking, content creating, influencing, or whatever else you wanna call it when you're putting yourself and your ideas and your, your content, your concepts out there in the world. Do not be garbage. If you listen to what I'm saying today and you actually apply it, you are garbage proofing yourself. All right, let's get to it. Point number one. Today's topic, once again, is how to have something to say, AKA how not to be garbage. First thing you must do is develop your unique angle and be able to articulate this unique angle. This is the most important thing that you will ever do when it comes to if you plan on building any type of brand. And that brand does not have to be one individual person. Your brand could be like Eminem's is a brand. The candy, not the rapper. The rapper too, he's a brand too. The Eminem's the candy is a brand. The, the, the Trump Hotel or the Trump Golf Course is a brand. Apple with their iPhones, Apple itself is a brand. KF Kentucky Fried Chicken is a brand. So a brand does not have to be one individual person, but every brand, if you're gonna stand out and you're gonna carve out space in the minds of your consumers, you must have a unique angle and you must be able to articulate that angle in such a way that when people hear your angle, that they understand exactly where you are and they understand that you're not just one in a sea of a thousand that is exactly the same as everybody else. So the question you must answer is what makes you different from every other fill in the blank who's doing the same thing as you? I'm not the first person in the world to deliver some type of message that is some people will call motivational or inspirational or uh, direct or giving people that quote real talk close quote. I'm not the first person to do any of those things but what is it about my message or your message or whoever's message that makes it different from everybody else who may be doing the same thing. I don't want anybody to listen to my message and say, damn, you remind me of this person. All right. Usually that doesn't happen. Very rarely does anybody say, Dre, what you're, the way that you deliver reminds me of X, Y, Z. If somebody said that to me, I would, start, I would start grilling that person. I would interrogate that person to the fifth degree and try to figure out why the hell they consider my message and, and whoever else's message to be similar. But I don't think anything that I say sounds like anybody else. I don't think it does, but if there's somebody that I sound like, let me know. All right, so either they're copying my shit, I know I'm not copying theirs, or maybe we just ended up being similar without either of us knowing it, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, I don't wanna sound like anybody, and I don't want anybody sounding like me. What makes your delivery or your whatever, whatever it is, different from anybody else who's in your space? What makes you different from any other uh, coach out there? What makes you different from any other basketball player who's also trying out for the team. We'll make your YouTube channel different from every other woman who's putting up makeup tutorials. What makes you different? This is, a, this is not a rhetorical question that you could just you know, be thinking about and get to whenever you get to. This is the first thing you need to get to. Be able to answer this question. This is the other thing you gotta do. You gotta be able to answer this question in a sound bite, meaning within 10 to 30 seconds, can you answer this question? What are people getting here they're not getting anywhere else? Then once you can do that, Work on reflecting this uniqueness or communicating this uniqueness in your presentation. Meaning people should be able to tell in your videos, on your website, or anywhere they see you, in person, in, on your podcast, on your blogs, in your emails, something that makes you stand out so people understand, all right, I know when I see a message from this person, I know exactly what I'm getting. I got a pretty good idea what they're gonna give me. I got a pretty good idea. You may not know exactly what they're gonna say or what story they're gonna tell or what offer they're gonna have or what surprise they're gonna deliver you, but you know their style. You got a feeling for their style. You got a feeling for what their brand is about. Or you wanna do that. All right. that's, what, that's the way that you carve your space into somebody's mind so that they know when they hear about that thing, they think of you. When they think of you, they, hear, they think about that thing. This is branding 101 right here. This unique angle is the key to your brand because more and more people are stepping into the realm of marketing themselves and their business and their services, and anybody can do it completely for free. That's the thing that's allowing so many people to jump in. 
It's flattened out now. Anybody can do it. Back in the day, let's say 20, 25, 30 years ago, if you wanted to brand yourself or market yourself in any marketplace, you had to have advertising dollars. Or you had to somehow, some way, finagle your way onto radio or on the television or into a magazine. And usually those things cost money. Now, you can get yourself known on the internet and it doesn't cost you any money. It costs you time, but it doesn't cost you any money. Therefore, everybody's trying it because people are willing to invest time when they don't have money. And that's fine. That's a good thing to do. But because of this, you have a whole hell of a lot of competition. Every day, you got more competition. Every day, some people are dropping out, but there are more people replacing them. For every one dropout, you got 10 new drop-ins who are coming to c- compete against you for other people's attention. You're not competing for, on skill. You're competing on attention. If they can get somebody's attention away from you, then they're beating you. So what is it about you that's going to keep people remembering you for what you're bringing to the table? At least the right people. It doesn't have to be everybody, but the right people. That your target audience paying attention to you and knowing you for your thing, whatever that's going to be. Your unique angle allows people to identify you out of a crowd and possibly to choose you even though they have multiple options. There be times when people have way more options than just you in a similar space. Why would they choose you? This is a question that you should ask yourself and then you should come up with answers to. Why would they choose you? Here's a good way to know that you have established your angle or a good way to see how far away you are from establishing your angle. Google yourself or Google whatever your angle happens to be and see what comes up. See what the Internet is saying. See what Google is saying. The reason why we use Google as the the litmus test here is because that's the place people go when they're looking for something. For the most part, I know, I know there are other search engines out there. You got DuckDuckGo, you got Google, you got Yahoo, you got Bing. Listen, you can look at all of them. There's not that many of them. Look up your name or your brand's name. Look up your unique angle or whatever it is that you want people to know about you. The thing you want people to associate with your name, whatever that is, look it up and see what's being said. See what the consensus is on that name. Is it going to you or is it going to somebody else? Once Google knows your unique angle and it knows your name, all right, now you're in a good spot. But don't think just because you're there that you're good. Now you got to hold it down. Now you got to stay there because if somebody sees that you're holding the spot and that you're getting lazy, they're going to come after it. Business is more treacherous than sports when it comes to competition. One reason being, in business, you don't know who your competition is. At least in sports, you know who the other teams are. In business, you have no idea how many competitors there are who are trying to take your spot. You don't even know that they exist, but they know everything about you. Or at least if you play basketball, you know that you got the Nets, you got the Bulls, you got the Lakers, the Clippers. You know who all the opponents are. In business, you have no idea. So you got to figure out what your unique angle is, hold it down, and you got to stay there because people will be coming for your spot, especially if you're winning. If you're successful, people are coming for your spot very, very quickly because they want some of that success too. Point number two, today's topic is how to have something to say, aka how to not be garbage. Find your voice. This is a very important one too. Once you figured out your angle, you got to figure out how you're going to deliver that angle and how you're going to own that angle in such a way that even if somebody listens to everything you put out, reads everything you write, watches every video you record, they still can't copy you because you have a certain voice. And when I say voice, I'm not talking about actually like the tone of voice of what you sound like. Like if somebody was blindfolded, but they know it was you talking. Yes, that's the tangible version of it. But I'm talking about finding your voice in such a way that even if somebody read something that you wrote, they know it's you because they can read your style without actually hearing your voice. You understand? Find your voice. You want people to hear you speak or read your words and know that is you without even having it attached to you, without seeing your face, without seeing your name. Your style needs to be such that it stands out from anyone else's, even if they were saying the same thing that you're saying. You want your style to be branded by you in such a way that it can't be copied because it's coming from the essence of who you are. So see, finding your voice is not about you acting. Uh, You don't have to become something that you're not. What you need to do is become even more of who you are, which may require you, depending on your conditioning, your socialization, undoing some of the training that you or someone else has given to you that has made you be somebody other than who you are. When you're being exactly who you are, you don't have to remember your voice. You don't have to remember You may have to remember your unique angle if you manufactured it. There's nothing wrong with manufacturing your unique angle. But you don't have to remember your voice. You don't have to remember the essence of who you are. You want people to know it's you just through your style and not be able to copy you even though they tried to copy you. 
This is easiest, this is most easily done when you are comfortable enough with yourself and your ideas that you can just speak, quote, how you are, close quote. The way that you normally talk, whatever your normal style of speaking is, this is most easy for you to find your voice when you're comfortable just taking your normal communication style and putting it out there to the world. This is just the normal way that I talk. This is the normal way that I communicate. You just happen to be watching it. Or this just happens to be on video. This just happens to be on a mic. It just happens to be in a book. But if there was no mic, no book, no camera, I'd still be talking this exact same way. If you can say that about yourself, you've already found your voice. All right? You can do this as almost normal. It's what some people will call the natural. All right? These are the people who, when they speak, when they get on a microphone or on a camera or when they're communicating with an audience, it just seems like it's coming naturally to them. It's like they're not even trying. They're not even thinking. They don't have to work too hard at it. It's not that they don't work hard. It's not that they don't try and that they don't think. It feels like they're not because it comes from the essence of who they are, which means they don't have to remember to do it. It just comes out of them. It's just natural for them. That's just how they are. The way that they normally communicate is the same way they communicate when they're dealing with their audience. Personally, I put myself in this category put myself in the category that the way that I talk here on this on this mic or if you're watching on video or if you read something that I wrote that's just the way that I communicate even if there was no audience that's just my normal style of communication so I was I guess you could say lucky in that way the way that I talk here on this this show this master class experience you get to work on your game this is the same way that I talk even if there, like I said no mic if it was just me and you having a conversation I'd be talking to you the same way maybe not as loud <laughs> but exactly the same way but not everybody is like this right? and that's okay not everybody it doesn't come perfectly natural for everybody in the, everything that you do some things are natural for you in some areas and some places you got to put a little bit more work in listen basketball didn't come naturally to me but I worked at it and I was able to eventually get good enough that it looked like it was natural but it wasn't in this right here it may be vice versa for you maybe there's some other area of life where things did come naturally to you but you're looking to pivot into doing something else and it's not so natural doesn't mean you can't be good at it all you got to do is work on your game that's why you're listening to what you're listening to right now it doesn't mean that it won't happen for you if it's not natural so i wasn't like i said natural at sports but with some work i got good and eventually it looked like it was even though it absolutely was not so with work you can make it look like something that is not that it actually isn't but again look enough work it almost seems like talent right that's the way that it works out point number three today's topic is how to have something to say aka how not to be garbage here's the most important thing i already said that something else was most important here's something else is most important all right they're one a and one b maybe they're both tied they're tied for the number one most important thing do not once you get out there to your audience Whatever you're going to say, whatever, whether you're speaking on a stage, on an a Instagram story, a Facebook live, a YouTube channel, a podcast, whatever you're doing, do not just say the things that we already know or we already agree with or that we already think. When I say we, I'm talking about we as being the audience. So right now, you're the audience, but I'm saying if I'm in the audience, don't get up on the stage and just tell me a whole bunch of things that I already know or that you think I already know. Don't say the things that you know I already agree with. Don't regurgitate the thoughts that you think that I'm already thinking because or if you're only telling me the things that I already agree with and that I already know and you have the same perspective that I had when I walked in, why the hell did I just invest an hour of my time listening to you talk? Why? If you want to not be garbage, if you want to have something to say, here's the crux of it right here. You must offer something to your audience that conflicts with one of their ideas, habits, or beliefs, or their, the knowledge that they brought into the room. Ideas, habits, beliefs, knowledge. You must say something that goes against something that they already had established in their mind. Otherwise, we don't need you. I don't need anybody to tell me what I already believe. If I want to hear somebody tell me what I already believe, then I'll be part of the choir and I'll go to church. Like I talked about a couple episodes, preach to the choir. The choir shows up to church every Sunday, even though they heard the sermon three times before. Why? Because they want to hear the same thing over and over again. And that's not a bad thing. But if you're going to build a brand, you're going to have a voice. You're going to say something that hasn't been said. You're going to be anything other than garbage. You're going to do anything other than blend into the crowd. You got to challenge me. When I say me, I'm talking about me as an audience member. Tell me something that I did not know. Or... Approach something that I do know from an angle that I never thought of before or take one of the things that you believe that I believe and tell me why that belief is incorrect 
and then build your case for why. Or take one of the opinions that you think I have and tell me why that opinion is not quite accurate and tell me why your opinion is better. These are the things that you must be willing to do if you're going to have a voice. You got to be willing to challenge your audience. And let me tell you something. When you challenge your audience, not everybody's going to accept it. Some people will push back. Some people will be pissed off. Some people will tell you that you're wrong for challenging them the way that you challenge them. But this is part of the game. If you're going to have a voice and not be garbage and stand out, don't tell me what I already know. All right? I don't need you to tell me what I already know. I already knew that. I paid you with an hour of my time or paid you for $300 for this ticket to this event just to hear you tell me something that I already believe. Like, I'm not, I won't make that mistake again. While it will be accepted, while saying things that people already believe, already agree with, tell them if you reinforce the habits that people already have, listen, that will be accepted. All right, nobody's going to have a problem with it, but this is the problem. All right. We don't have any reason to remember a person or remember a person's message if all they're telling us are things that we already believe. If you want to get into somebody's head, you want somebody to remember you, you must give them something that they were not already expecting. We talked about this before, that the human brain works on autopilot for the most part. 98% of what we do mentally is on autopilot. We are habitual creatures. That's with our thoughts, with our habits, our ideas, our actions, Everything is habitual. Therefore, when we come across other people, we have certain expectations of what that person is going to do, what they're going to say, what they're, you know, how they're going to behave. We have expectations of it. And when the people that we come across fit the expectations that we have, we have no reason to remember them. That goes in one ear and out the other, as, as they said. Why? Because you fit the expectations that we already have. We already got so much stimuli in front of us every single day. We can't have to analyze every single individual and every single thing we come across. You would, you would go crazy mentally. Your brain would go into overdrive. Now you, blow the, you blow a gasket in your mental engine if you had to assess every single thing. Therefore, we hope and we, we get this hope fulfilled that most of the people we come across just fit our expectations of what they're going to do. I'm walking down the street. I see another person coming in my direction. I don't know this person. I'm going to go to the right. They're going to go to the left. We're not going to bump into each other. They're not going to say anything to me. They're not going to touch me. I'm going to keep going. They're going to keep going. That's usually what happens. I mean, think about that. How many people do you walk past in a day? How many of them stop you or say anything to you who you don't know? Usually none of them or make any type of physical contact. Usually none of them. When someone does that, when someone breaks that mold and does something different, we remember them. Why? Because they did something different from what our habitual mental expectation was if you want people to remember you you want to have a voice you want to stand out in the crowd you must give them something that separates your message your presence from what they already expected from the things that they filter out today any of you who walks to work every day or goes to school or maybe you were in a mall or you were on public transportation how many human beings did you cross paths with physically today probably you might have crossed paths paths with 500 people today how many of them of the strangers that is how many of them do you actually remember maybe three two one zero why because none of them did anything that broke what you were mentally expecting of them unconsciously so if you want people to remember you of the thousands that they come across every single day or in their lives how are they going to remember you you got to give them something that breaks the mold of what they were expecting the challenge with this I want to make sure I'm telling you everything. The challenge with this is you're going to get pushed back. You're going to piss some people off. Some people are going to be angry with you. People will challenge you. People will let you know that they don't agree with your point of view. There will always be a few who will tell you that. They don't agree with your point of view. Actually, a lot of people won't agree, but only a few will let you know about it. And then they're going to challenge you to, to back up your points. They're going to challenge you to stand on what you said. They're going to give you their counterpoint, and you got to have a counterpoint for their counterpoint. You better be ready for that. When I step on the stage and tell people about the super you, which is your highest possible level of confidence, I say there's no such thing as too much confidence. Oh, believe me, there are people who disagree with that. But I'm ready for that. I'm ready to counter their counter. Because I know people are going to push back against that. But guess what? Nobody forgets it. Whether you agree with it or not, you don't forget it. Why? Because I'm giving you something other than what you expected. Now, if I tell you what everybody would normally tell you, yes, you want to be very confident. We want to keep it balanced. You want to be too arrogant. You want to be cocky. You want your confidence to be out of control because then people won't like you. Well, what the hell you need to hear me say that for? All right. Did you hear that in kindergarten? You didn't need that from me. I'm going to give you something that you weren't expecting. And then I'm going to back it up. And then I'll be ready to back up your challenge to my backup. 
If you're not ready for doing that, then you're not ready to step on any stage. And I'm not talking about a physical stage. This could be a, a YouTube video with 10 people watching it. You better be ready for the pushback. Because if you're saying something that goes against the grain and you have a good, good argument for why you're saying what you're saying, that 10 will become 10,000. And when 10,000 people see what you put out, I'll guarantee somebody's going to disagree. Somebody's going to have something to say. You better have something to say back. And don't argue in the comments. Just make a new piece of content. If you're going to go back and forth with somebody, at least make sure you're creating content out of it. Don't waste your, don't waste your value in the, content section, the comment section of life, metaphorically speaking. It won't be accept. It will be accepted, rather. Nobody's going to have a problem when you say what they already believe, but that's the problem. We don't have any reason to remember that. You want to get somebody's attention, give them something they're not expecting. For example, when you see somebody that you know, I mean, they may not be a, a deep friend, but they're a high and by individual. You know those people who you say high and by? You ask them, hey, how are you doing? Usually, what do people say when you ask them, how are you doing? What do you say when somebody asks you, how are you doing? What's your default answer? I'm good. I'm fine. I'm great. I'm doing all right. You know, the type of things that we filter out. We don't even remember what the person said. The last person you asked, how are you doing? What was the exact word that they used? What were the exact words they used in response? You don't even remember. Why? Because they said something that you've heard a million times. No reason for you to remember it. All right? the, brain doesn't have, the brain does not have the capacity to be remembering things like that that don't matter. But what if somebody says something like, man, I'm doing amazing. Would you remember that? Probably. What if somebody says, I'm doing terrible. Would you remember that? You probably stop in your tracks and ask them why they're doing terrible. And you will listen. If somebody told you they were doing amazing, that would stop you in your tracks. You ask them, why are you feeling amazing? What's going on? What happened? Now they have your attention. So if you're paying attention here, if you just reverse engineer the, the basic example I just gave you, I just told you how you can get somebody's attention very quickly. It wakes you up out of your sleep when you hear something other than what you were expecting to hear. The audience is expecting you to zig and you zag. This is how comedy works. Now, I'm not a comedian, never done it before, but I read some things about stand-up com comedy. And they say the basic concept of stand-up comedy is you're you know, leading people along a certain path and they're expecting the path to go to the left, but your path goes to the right. That's where the humor happens. When you surprise people and give them something other than what they were thinking was coming. Because you know, human beings, we're pretty smart. You know, and the longer you live, the more things you've experienced, the more, uh, the more pre-judgments you have about what's going to come next and when you're able to mess with somebody's head by giving them the exact opposite of what they thought was coming that's when the laughter happens that's the comedy right there the challenge with this is as i've already uh, laid out part of this most people don't want to say anything new because going against the grain will either be here's what's going to happen when you go against the grain when you say something other than what people expect, what people already believe, you tell them that the habits that they've had or the ideas that they came into the room with are absolutely not right, that they should do something different, here's what's going to happen. Either people will ignore you, which will extinguish your behavior if you get ignored often enough, you'll eventually say, all right, I might as well stop saying that because nobody's paying attention. Or people will push back against what you said, challenge you, and you won't be able to stand up to the challenge. That's another thing that happens. Or... People will just straight up attack you. They don't challenge you and ask you to answer back. They don't even ask you to answer back. They'll just tell you what they need to say and expect you to listen to it. Are you ready to deal with that attack? Or people try to ridicule you. There's another thing that people do, especially these days with when we have social media where anybody can leave a comment and say whatever they want. People try to ridicule you and they'll try to ridicule you out of your position. Whatever it is you're saying, they believe be, that the ridicule will extinguish your behavior because nobody likes to be ridiculed. Most of us don't like being ridiculed, at least not unless we're laughing with them instead of being laughed at. So when these things happen, most people, the people who are actually putting the idea out there and you face being ignored, pushed back against, attacked and ridiculed, most people don't want to be subject to that. They're not willing to stand up to that heat. But this is the only way you're going to make yourself unique. You want to stand out from the audience, not the audience, from the crowd of everybody else who's doing a similar thing to you. What are you going to say, do, represent that nobody else is willing to say, do, or represent? Or that nobody else thought of saying, doing, and representing? Dave Chappelle, I use an example here. He put out a comedy special not too long ago called Sticks and Stones. And then now there are a ton of comedians out there these days, right? Now this Chappelle thing was on, I believe it was on Netflix, right? Any of you have a Netflix subscription how many comedy specials are available on Netflix right now? 
probably more than you can count probably a hundred of them available for you to watch on demand on netflix right now so why would anybody watch dave chappelle's well one reason that dave chappelle was already famous before he put this out that's one reason but if he put it out and it's just been a an okay comedy show maybe some people are watching maybe they wouldn't but nobody could stop talking about dave chappelle's comedy special the week or so after it came out why is that because the joke started to go viral or at least the subject matter of his jokes started to go viral. If you didn't see the comedy special, I'm not going to regurgitate any of the jokes, but I will tell you that Dave Chappelle took on some subjects that a lot of comics are afraid to take on these days. He talked about the Me Too movement. He talked about the LGBTQ community. Is that everybody? He talked about that. He talked about Donald Trump. He talked about, what else did he talk about? He talked about domestic violence between men and women. He talked about a whole lot of subjects that people get, people clam up and get nervous when a subject even comes up because they know that there's probably somebody in the room who feels completely opposite of how they may feel and nobody wants to ruffle any feathers, so nobody says anything. Dave Chappelle said, fuck it, I'm going to say everything. And whoever gets mad, gets mad. I'm a comedian. He used, the, he used the, the sheen of being a comedian to be able to make jokes about these things. And here's the thing about comedy. This is what I said about Dave Chappelle when it came out. I said this on Twitter. The, the reason that we like comedians, at least let me not speak for everybody. The reason I, and I believe some people, others, like comedians is that they can go on a stage and they can make jokes about the very things that we wish we can make jokes about, but we know in this PC culture is not right for us to make jokes about. We wish we can make jokes about uh, politics. We wish we could make jokes about domestic violence. So we wish we could make jokes about the LGBTQ community. We wish we, we wish we could make jokes about R. Kelly and Michael Jackson and the, the little boys and the little girls that were supposedly abused. We wish we could joke and laugh about that stuff, but we're not supposed to. Now, it's not, let me not say we wish that we could. I don't sit around thinking like, damn, I really wish I could tell this Donald Trump joke. It's not like that, but these are things that they, there's tension in them. Uh, we know there's tension in the, the Michael Jackson story and the R. Kelly thing and, and in Donald Trump and in politics and in LGBTQ community and domestic violence. There's tension in it because we know that different people have different feelings about these things. Some people go through these things. Some people may be part of these communities and we don't even know. People get really sensitive about these subjects, true or not true. Some of you probably avoid talking about certain subjects with certain other people because you know how they get or maybe you know how you get. All right, let's not exclude ourselves. So comedy, the great thing about comedy, in my opinion, is that the comedian can step on the stage and they can talk about all of that shit and joke about it and take it to the furthest extreme. And we can laugh at it because you know why we laugh about this stuff? You know why people can laugh at Michael Jackson jokes and R. Kelly jokes and Donald Trump jokes and LGBTQ jokes? You know why? Because the tension that gets built up over the fact that we're not supposed to laugh at it every single day, that tension gets built up. Laughter allows us to release that energy. Like, thank you for making a joke about that so I can laugh about it because this tension has been building up in me for the last three weeks because I work next to somebody who's a homosexual and I can't make any jokes and I can't laugh at the jokes because this person gets real sensitive. Watching you, Dave Chappelle, helps me let all that energy out that I've been holding in for the last three months at work. That's what a comedian does. So when people got pissed off about Chappelle making these jokes about things, I'm like, shit, if he can't joke about it, who the hell can? Somebody got to be able to joke about it. That's the point. And listen... And I, I really didn't get, just as a side note, I really didn't get how uh, people of color, African Americans specifically, were some of them really did not like the fact that R. Kelly was making these jokes about about uh, LGBTQ and Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. They didn't like that. Did I say R. Kelly? Did I say Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle was making these jokes about these things. They're like, how are you going to make jokes about that? That is not right. And you know, you're. You know, we need to protect these people or you're just taking liberties because you're a comedian. It's not right to attack these people. And I'm thinking to myself, black comedians made stereotypical black jokes and got rich off of making stereotypical black jokes for years, for decades. There were jokes. There was these running stereotypes about black folks that we laughed at all the time, we fell out of our seats laughing at for years. Now, LGBTQ becomes the butt of a joke for, I don't know, what, a year or two? And everybody's up in arms. I just didn't get that. I didn't get how people of color could possibly take exception to that. But you'll laugh at, you know, the Chappelle show where he made so many jokes that were about stereotypes about black folks. But anyway, that's a side topic that I talked about on my blog. So if you don't read my stuff, then you should be reading it because the stuff that comes on here on this show and the stuff that comes on 
videos on YouTube and the stuff that comes in writing is all different stuff. I don't take the same content and make a different, you know, different media out of the exact same piece of content. I could do that, but I'd rather give you something unique on each one. But again, that's my voice. That's what makes me stand out from the crowd. That's one thing that makes me stand out from the crowd. All of that being said, the only way to make yourself unique is, is being willing to say something that is going to make some people uncomfortable. And when people are uncomfortable, they will push back. Are you ready for that? The bottled water industry took off. Some of you are old enough to remember that there used to be a time where if you wanted some water, you turned on the faucet at your sink, you pour some water in the damn glass and you drink it. Simple as that. No filter, no bottle. Just turn on the tap, pour the water in there and drink it. I personally still do that. I don't use the, you know, the, um, the refrigerator in my home has one of those water dispensers. I don't even use that. I just take it straight out the tap. Now, I happen to live in a city where it's okay to drink the tap water, oh, quote unquote, okay, based on you know, some environmentalist or whatever. But I don't care where I'm at. I'm drinking the water out the tap as long as, I, as long as the bottle can fit under the faucet. But the bottled water industry said, this is what they said. They said, tap water is bad for you. Tap water will make you sick. Tap water is not clean. Tap water could cause cancer. I don't know if they said cause cancer, but you get what I'm saying. They started putting all these fears and doubts in your mind about the, the cleanliness and the healthiness of drinking water out of the tap. And they convinced enough people that now we have an entire industry that is based around putting water in a plastic bottle that you have to buy the water. I mean, look, turn on the faucet in your house. That water is, I mean, it's not free because there's a water bill, but it costs a whole lot less to get water out of your faucet than it costs to get water out of a bottle. But the bottled water industry was able to convince millions of people that they got to get their water out of a bottle. Now, there are some people out there in the world who actually need water out of a bottle because the water coming out of their faucets, if there is any, is not healthy. But for many of us, especially Americans, especially those in the Western world, that's not the case. But you still buy bottled water. Why? Because they have convinced you that there's something wrong with the water out of the tap. Ain't a damn thing wrong with that water. Listen, I'm healthy. <laughs> All right, you hear, you hear this show, don't you? All right, I drink the water out of the tap. I do not buy bottled water and I'm good. Now, maybe I'm the exception. Maybe I'm just lucky. I don't know. The point is the bottled the bottle water industry disturbed your beliefs. And that's how it got your attention. Your belief was it's okay to drink tap water. They changed that belief to it's not okay. And now you pay $6 for some water when you could get it for six cents out of your tap. The same amount of water. Here's the great thing about today. As opposed to back in the day. As a creator, as that person on stage, you have the space to explain your position so that people can understand your point of view, such as what I've been doing here today. My points are never as long as these master classes go. My points, if all I did was just give you my points, these classes would be about five to eight minutes, but they usually go about 20 to 40 minutes. Why is that? Because I had the space to explain my point of view. If I just told you what my point was, I could do this on, no, I could do this on Twitter. All right, 280 characters. But I had the space to explain to you, to give context, to tell you stories, to tell you why I think what I think, why to give you more examples of what I'm doing. This is the context and the space that I had. 30 years ago, this kind of space cost a whole lot of money. Nowadays, how much does it cost? Right, there's, no, there's no incremental cost. Now, does it cost me to have a microphone and have data and Wi-Fi and a place to host things? Yes, but once you've paid for it, is pretty much unlimited. I can make this as long as I want. I can make a four, these could be four hours every day if I wanted them to be. It doesn't cost me any extra money, it costs me extra time and energy, but it doesn't cost me any extra money. That's the great thing about today is that you have the space to explain your position because you know people are gonna disagree with it. When you can back up and explain your position and you're articulate enough to make that point make sense, all right, now you can change the game. Let's recap today's topic, which is how to have something to say, AKA for you creators, how to not be garbage. If you don't wanna be garbage, follow my points. All right, first it was blogs, then it was YouTube, now we got podcasts, now it's all three. The thing is, since everybody wants to do these, a lot of these motherfuckers are garbage, and I'm trying to help you from being garbage. If you're already garbage, I'm going to save you. If you're on your way to being garbage, I'm going to keep you from falling over the edge of that waterfall today. But So listen closely to what I'm saying. Number one, develop your unique angle and be able to articulate that angle. What makes you different from every other fill-in-the-blank who's doing the same thing that you're doing? Be able to answer this question in a soundbite, then make it reflect this uniqueness, make it reflect in everything that you put out. This unique angle is the key to your brand because more and more people are stepping in and they're making it more crowded. How do you stand out from the crowd? Google yourself. Find out if you're standing out or if you're not. Number two, find your voice. You want people to hear you speak or listen to your words without even seeing your face or knowing your name and know that it's you because you have a unique 
specific style that nobody else can copy. Even if they're trying to copy you, they can't copy you. This comes easiest to people who are comfortable enough with themselves to just be their natural selves, to be how they are. These are the people who somebody would say, oh, this person's just a natural at what they're doing. I put myself in this category. You may or may not be in this category, but that's okay. doesn't mean there's no hope for you if you're not a natural at it. I wasn't a natural at playing basketball, for example, but I was able to make something good out of it. So all you got to do is work on it enough and you can make it look natural even if it's not natural. Number three, most important, do not just say the things that you know all that you already know people agree with or are already doing or the opinions that they already have. Otherwise, they will filter you out. If you're just saying what they already believe. They'll filter you out. Why do I need to remember you? All right, that's the exact problem. When you say the things that people agree with, yes, they will agree with it. Yes, they'll like you, but they're going to forget you as soon as you're done talking. So if you ask somebody how they're doing, they say fine or good, you forget about it. But somebody says terrible or amazing, it wakes you up out of your sleep. The challenge with this, with challenging people's beliefs, opinions, habits, and ideas, is that people will push back against you because they will either ignore you, push back, attack you, ridicule you, and you got to be ready to stand up to that heat. Most people are not willing to do that, so they never even try in the first place. But if you're willing to do it, understand this is the only way you're going to make yourself unique. The bottled, the bottled water industry disturbed millions of Americans by telling them that something's wrong with the water coming out of the tap, even though we drank that water for hundreds of years and people weren't dying from it. But all of a sudden, you need water out of the bottle. It's healthier. All right, look, it got a mountain on it. It came from a, a Poland spring. All right, are they, are they even in springs in Poland? All right, you get your water coming off of some rocks and it's coming down a waterfall. Does that make you feel healthier when you drink that water out of that bottle? This is what the bottled water industry did to you. It got you in the matrix of believing that you have to get your water out of a bottle to be healthy. Okay, but it worked. Uh, listen, I'm just, I'm just pointing out what happened. It worked. They're selling a whole lot of bottled water these days because they were able to disturb your thinking and change your opinions and beliefs. Not mine, but they were able to change a whole lot of other people's. Right, I'm not part of the target market. All you got to do since you have the space these days, since you have the space of unlimited bandwidth pretty much on YouTube or podcasting or blogging, or none of these platforms ever said, hey, we're running out of space. There's only, you know, only 10 more people can start a YouTube channel. As many people as want to do it can do it. And as long as you want to make content, you can keep making it. The space is pretty much unlimited. So now you had a space to not only make your point, but to explain your point, to back up your point, to give examples of your point, and to convert people to your point of view. If you had a space to do that, unlike with the bottled water industry, they had to spend millions of dollars in marketing money in order to get that point across. You can do it just by getting your point across over and over and over again consistently online. It doesn't cost you any money, but it will cost you time. Work on your game. Dre all day. Hey, this is Dre all day. If you enjoy this mental game stuff that I talk about on video every day, then I put together a simple master class that will give you one key tip for developing what I call the bulletproof mindset. All you need to do is go to workonmygame.com slash bulletproof. There's the link right here and it's down below in the video description. Just click on it. It'll take you right to the page. I'm going to give you that video. It's about 20 minutes long. This master class I put together one key tip for developing a bulletproof mindset. And when you get that special master class free video, I'm also going to make you a special offer to get the full bulletproof mindset experience. So just go to that link that you see right here, and I'm going to show you how to develop that bulletproof mindset right now. So if you like this video that you just watched, I'm going to show you how to take it to the highest possible level. You ready for that? Let's do it.